three accountants. He was to embark upon a journey and handed his money onto them. He gave them the first person 5,000 Naira. The next was given 2,000 Naira. While the last accountant got 1,000 Naira. The one who had 5,000 Naira went and traded and made another 5,000 Naira. Likewise, the one who had two gained another 2,000 Naira. But the man who had 1,000 Naira constructed a box, put a hole on it, and hid the 1,000 Naira in the box. When the master returned, he commended the first two for making money of what he gave them for trading. But he chastised the last one who kept his cash idle. The topic for our discussion today is cash flow management with the writer investing idle cash tips and strategies. Like you know, on account solution platform, Ask the Accountant Weekly, we bring great experts to help us do justice to our topic. We have in the house tonight a highly professional financial expert with over 23 years of progressive experience in finance, risk management, audit and control design, compliance reviews, taxation, capital raising, and financial planning and reporting. He is a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of both Nigeria and the United Kingdom. He has great ability to deliver dynamic projects while maintaining high standards. If you're excited as I am tonight to be receiving to the platform, please, with a wave of hand or with some clap, Mr. Adeni, Adeyi, please. Some hand clap. Let's see some hand clap in the house. All right. Thank you. So, Mr. Ni Adeni, Adeyi will be doing justice to our topic. And we would like him to just go by a way of introduction of the topic. And we will delve straight into asking some of the questions that have come in from uh, interested participants and touching a key, key aspects of the topic tonight before we would throw the floor open for questions and answers. Mr. Adeni Adeni, please you have the floor. Welcome once again. All right, while we're, while we're expecting Mr. Ni nee, uh, to continue, while, while we're waiting for him to come in, let's look at a few, some key areas we'll be touching tonight. The first is, what exactly is idle cash? And why do you think businesses have idle cash? Are there any risks or disadvantages of having idle cash? How does cash flow management lead to having or not having idle cash? What are the safest areas of businesses can invest their idle cash? What roles do the CFOs, the accountants play in idle cash investment? And uh, from his perspective, we would also like to know tonight what he thinks that individuals, not just business owners, individuals who have cash on personal finance perspective, how they can utilize their cash in the best form possible for investment. And then we'll be looking at strategies for cash flow management and 
working capital ratio and how companies can consistently maintain healthy, adequate working capital. And then we'll be trying to find out from our experts what strategies he can share for business owners and CFOs, accountants, and how to maintain the right cash flow management system. And then we will receive some questions for the house tonight. Okay, thank you, moderator. Good evening, everyone. So I'll start by introducing myself. My name is Adini Yadi. Um, I'm a finance professional and I've been practicing for more than 24 years. Um, practicing as an accountant for more than 24 years. And, the, and I've been practicing as a chartered accountant for more than 20 years. Um, so basically, what we'll be talking about today is uh, managing cash flow and how to deal with idle cash. Um, this is the first time I'm participating in this series, so I don't know the um, methodology or the modality it's going to take. So I'll request and I'll ask the moderator, do you want me to just continue to speak concerning areas that you, questions that you sh you're showing on the screen, or there's somebody at the other hand that is going to um, ask questions as a guide. So how do you want it to, how do you want the proceedings to go? Okay, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, the questions on the screen that we have can be addressed by you as they scroll through. So from the back end, we'll have the questions, the first question and then the next. And as you see them, you can begin to address them. Thank you. Okay, all right. So a bit a bit of background into, a bit of uh, insight into my background. Um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a graduate of uh, accounting um, and I've been practicing for more than 24 years. Uh, I'm a fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Nigeria fellow of the Institute of the Association of Chartered Accountants in, uh, in the UK. Um, I'm a certified internal control auditor, um, certified for a specialist, um, and also a member of the Institute of uh, Financial Management of Nigeria, a fellow of the Institute of Financial Management of Nigeria. I would an MBA, um, and um, I've worked in various sectors. I've been in practice, uh, doing statutory audit. I've worked in the public sector. I've worked in the financial institution. And presently, I, I work with the oil and gas. So presently, I sit as a CFO and the general manager of the company where I work. So essentially, when we are talking about managing cash flow, and I do cash, cash flow, Cash is the life and is the blood of any business. And I always like to tell people that. Uh, most importantly, when you look at a company and when you, when business owners look at their business, they're always looking at two things. They want to look at the profitability of the business and they want to look at cash flow. And why it's good for the business to be profitable, because when the business is not profitable and business continue to make consistent loss, it erodes your shareholders' fund. But most importantly, cash is very, very important because it's the life of the business. When there is no cash in that business, and even if the business is profitable, the business is just going to die. So in the first instance, what is the idle cash? So, and I, when I try to make discussions concerning things like this, I try to break it down for everyone to understand. So I'll try as much as possible to avoid using financial jargons so that um, people that are finance professionals and non-finance professionals can also understand. I don't know 
the composition of your audience, but I assume that it will cut across. So for the benefit of people that are no accountants, they can under thought to understand. So I'll start with idle cash. What is idle cash? So idle cash is cash that as a business have, or even as a, as, a, as an individual, cash that you have that you do not require for maybe the day-to-day -day running of the business, or you do not require it for day-to-day -day running of your personal um, affairs. And this cash are not specifically pledged towards a future project as well. So basically, they are cash that are loose, that are cash that you have, that you don't have particular commitment to. So, um, like I tell people, there shouldn't be idle cash. That word in the first instance, I, I, I tried to challenge it a couple of times, because your cash should not be idle. As an accountant, a therapist, a professional, your cash, every money you have must work. It must continuously work. It must continuously do a particular thing for you. So if the money is working, it cannot be idle. So um all right, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much for that introduction. What we can take from that introduction is that at no point in time should we have idle cash. The cash at our disposal should be doing some work to generate flows for the business. Um, but you know, sometimes what would lead to businesses having idle cash? Because business owners, accountants, we all know that yes, our cash should be working. But what would make with this knowledge that we have still, you know, apart, aside that we have this knowledge, then we find situations where people have cash at their disposal that is actually doing nothing for them. And in fact, it's being affected by inflation on a, on a, on a daily basis, especially in, in climes like us in Nigeria. So what would lead a business, what, what are the causes that would lead a business to have excess idle cash with them? Okay, thank you, uh, moderator. There are a couple of things that could happen that will make a business have idle cash. So the first one is a, a cash flow mismatch. So what I mean by mismatch is, if your business, the timing of your receivables and the timing of your payables, if they don't match, there may be an idle cash situation in your hand. And you may also have a situation whereby you have cash constraint as well. So if there is a mismatch. So what do I mean? I try to break it down. So if you run a business whereby it's a cash and carry business. So customers pay on cash, you allow no debt. And you, 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 you service your creditors, you pay your creditors maybe in 60 days from a day of provision of services or supply of goods. So in that instance, you have, you have more cash in your hands. We can have idle cash. And what we'll get to that conversation whereby we can talk about what you need to do when you find yourself in such circumstances. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, in terms of adequate cash flow management, how do you think this comes into play in preventing having idle cash in a business? What, what can an accountant do? What can a business owner do to ensure that they have the kind of cash flow management that would prevent occurrence of having adequate cash in the business? Okay, thank you. So I was going to say a couple of other reasons where that can lead to high to cash situation. And one Please major thing which we have what we should have touched on is inappropriate cash flow management strategy. So as an accountant, beyond the keeping of records and keeping of the books, 
one thing that every accountant needs to master, and which I've noticed that most accountants find very challenging, is cash flow management. Now, bad cash flow management will put you in a situation whereby you either have idle cash, and where you have idle cash, you're losing a lot of money for your organization, or you have cash deficits, and you find yourself in a situation whereby you couldn't meet, you can, will not be able to meet your needs as and when they fall to you. So, what are the basic things that you need to do when you talk about cash flow management? So, for the benefit of people that are listening. So in the number one is you need to understand your business very well. So gone are those days when accountants just keep records. These days, accountants are business partners to every business where they work. You are, so you are a very you are a strategic partner to the business. You need to have a thorough understanding of the business. So by having a thorough understanding of the business, you should be able to set an optimal cash level for that business. So for instance, you work in, let's say manufacturing concern, uh, you sell to goods to, 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 to your customers. Based on your average receivable days, based on the average credit that you allow to your customers, based on your day-to-day -day activities in the business, you should be able to set an optimal, optimal level for your cash. You should have an understanding of this is the average amount of cash that we require within a particular period. That is, that's very important. You need to do that. If you are not being able to do that as an accountant, then you won't be able to manage your cash flow strategies very well. Then secondly, most importantly, is you need to do a cash flow projection. Very, very important. So, and from time to time, you need to tweak your projections. You need to do your cash flow projections. Your cash flow projections enables you to see the future from where you are standing now, where you are sitting. So you'll be able to see what the future activity of the company is. And because when you are doing building your projections, there are a lot of variables that come into it. You just don't sit down as an accountant and just build projections. You are talking with all the business partners. You are talking with every business manager. You are understanding the future plan of the business in building your projections. And because you understand the, business, the future part of the business and you know the financial implication of those future plans, you're able to project it into your cash flow. You know when the business business is going to do the copy capital project. You know when the business is going to do large payout from the employee. You know when the business is going to buy maybe products. You know when the business is going to give discounts to customers. A couple of a lot of things. So you have all that. When when you put that in the projection, you'll be able to see clearly those months that you have a surplus, those months that you are likely to have a deficit, and you are able to plan ahead for you. Then the other part is. When you have done the projection, you've, number one, you need to set optimal cash level. Two, you have to do a projection. Three, when you have a projection, I've been able to see periods when you have idle cash, periods when you have deficit. What do you do with your idle cash? What do you do with your idle cash? There are a couple of things that you could do with your idle cash. You could invest your idle cash. But when you are investing, you need to be very, very careful. So, talking from my experience, I've worked in the financial service industry. And in the financial service industry, some of the advantages that is an entity where you have excess cash. Excess cash, not because the cash is sufficient, but because, so for instance, and I tell you some of the peculiarities of financial service industry. So for instance, we work with the insurance industry right now. People pay premium for insurance. And so you have cash insurance. Well, again, those, those cash are not just your own. They are policy holders funds because a claim can occur that can take the whole cash from you. So, in as an accountant that work in that kind of environment, number one, you need to be mindful of the statutory provision, the solvency margin, the capital adequacy ratios. You have to you need to you need to be very mindful of those things, and you need to be mindful of the fact that those funds that you see now, 
that are not particularly committed to to day-to-day -day running activity of the business or to a particular future project, they are not your funds because a claim can occur, a claim can crystallize that could take all the cash. So you need to find a way to put those cash in maybe investments that is easily convertible to cash. But when you are doing that as well, you need to be mindful of the rate of inflation. Look at investments that are easily convertible to cash. I can give you a return that is higher than the, than the rate of inflation that you have. Because if you invest in, in, in investment that gives you a return that is lower than the rate of inflation, you're still losing money at the same, at the same time. So these are some of the, some of the things that you, you need to do. So if you have time, we'll talk about a, look, a couple of channels where you can put funds, idle cash, and you can- Thank you. Return. Thank you very much, sir. Um, from, from what we can get, the first thing for the accountants is an adequate understanding of the business. Then your ability to do a proper cash flow projection for the business. That would also flow from the understanding. Um, you talked about the knowing the statutory provisions, things like capital adequacy ratio, and all of that. Now for this proper cash flow projection, are there certain tools that would enable an accountant come up with adequate uh, cash flow projection based on the understanding of the business that they already have? Are there tools that would assist the accountants or the CFO to get to this? Or business owners who may not, who could be running their businesses by themselves and would want to do these projections on their own. Uh, and then um, as you take that question too, as regards the tools, um, there, there is also another part as regards the working capital ratio for companies and how they can, the best practice to consistently maintain this. Okay, thank you. Uh, so as regards the tools, cash flow projection is very simple. We can do it just basically in the spreadsheets. So you don't need any sophisticated tool to, to make a projection. I assume that as a finance person, even long finance person these days use the spreadsheet very well. So if you can use the spreadsheet very well, that's, that's sufficient for you to do any projection that you need, basically. So you don't need an, an, an advanced tool. So if you know how to use more advanced tool, yeah, fine. But I mean, the simplest tool that you need to do a projection you just understand and know how to use the spreadsheet. When you use the spreadsheet, when you know how to use the spreadsheet, you are good and you can make a very good projection with your spreadsheet. But most importantly, other than the tool, which is where the emphasis is, because the tool will not do the work for you, no matter the amount of tool you use, the input into the projection is what matters. It's what gives a big, a, 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 it's what makes a good projection not really the tool. The tool makes it easy. It makes simulation easy. It makes sensitivity analysis easy. But the tool is not going to give you the best the good result. What gives you the good result is the input, what you feed into that cash flow. And I think that's where the, the heavy lifting is for most accountants. You see, when it comes to cash flow management for most accountants, the greatest challenge accountants have and it's not written in books, it's managing the business owner. So when you work with, so if you're an accountant, you are not the business owner, you report to the MD, you report to the business owner, and it is not totally in your hands in terms of decision-making, where you're gonna put your funds, where you're gonna manage your cash flow, it's not totally in your hands. So, Things that are very important is number one, you need to get your input in your projections, right? Two is you need to be able to know how to communicate effectively. That's why these days we tell accountant communication is key, is a, is a critical success factor to every accountant role now. You need to be able to communicate your numbers effectively to the decision maker. And you need to be able to see, let them see the reasons why you are saying, look, we need to take this route. 
no, we need to do this at this time. Because if they don't, no matter what you know, you may be a very good accountant, you may have all the things that you, you may have all the knowledge, but if you are unable to communicate and convince the decision maker, you find it very difficult. So <clears throat> that's where the experience in being a CFO, experience in being an accountant of long standing comes in because you work with different uh, decision makers. Some are just ready to do things the way that suit them, but you need to be able to convince them. And how do you convince them if you don't have the necessary input, you don't have the necessary key, you can show them the projections, you can let those projections speak to them. It's very, that's very important. So talking about the capital ratio, the working capital ratio, basically it, it's the standard ratio, which is the acceptable norm, you know, it's, um, uh, ratio one to one. And that's when you talk about the, uh, the acid test, and the current ratio, which is to, to one. But I say specifically beyond the theoretical. So I like to bring things to the, to the practical level. Beyond the theoretical, you could set working capital ratio for your organization based on what is currently happening there. So I give you an example. When I was working in the financial service industry, I realized that financial service industry an uh, industry whereby you have a high level of liquidity. But when I moved from financial service industry or oil, the oil and gas industry, I realized that the oil and gas industry is a highly capital intensive industry. So the kind of liquidity that you have, when you have what you work in the financial service industry, you will not have it in the oil and gas. Not that there is no high cash flow, there is, but because there are projects all the time and there are capital intensive projects that takes cash from you. So you may not have that kind of cash that you have. So, so you're trying to set a standard working capital for those two industries. It, 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 it will be a very wrong decision. So have an accountant, if you're using the same working capital ratio for both industries, then you, you'll be making a mistake. So that's why I said, when you take it beyond the theoretical, you try to practicalize it. You can set the working capital ratio for the entity where you work based on the peculiarity of that entity. You know? So that, that, would, that, would be, that would be my advice. So, but in terms of setting working capital ratio, the norm, when you look at the asset test ratio, ratio one to one, when you look at the uh, current ratio, to one basically that's that's what the norm is thank you thank you thank you very much well um from what i can hear very clearly today's accountants today's cfo should go beyond the books and you have to set what is applicable to the business that you're in especially if you understand and then you you underscore the importance of effective communication, knowing how to convince the decision makers of the business. And I know that that will come, that will boil down to financial analysis and presentation of financial data. Uh, so that, because you need to adequately convince people beyond words of mouth and show them um, the, the data. So it, it, let's, let's, Take a situation where, yes, this accountant has gone beyond the books. They understand their business. They understand adequate financial analysis. They can communicate and present, you know, some of the, the, the data that they have to convince decision makers. What areas of investment do we channel these idle cash to? Looking at the peculiarity of Nigeria, uh, you you wait, imagine you're, you're a trading business and every week right now, you go to the market, the price last week is different from the price two weeks ago. It will be different from the price next week. So what do we do with the cash that we have? Because the fear sometimes could be, do we keep this cash just in case? How do we... Ensure that oh we're investing, but we're not tying down our cash. And 
how do we get something in the end so that inflation give and take is not rubbing off on, 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 on the net position of the business as regards the account? Help, help us to address the issues around um, ideal cash investment. Okay, thank you, uh, moderator. So there are a couple of ways to idle cash and so that I can give you uh, some, some, some returns. So basically, there are investment avenues that you can explore. You can explore bonds. You can explore treasury bills. Uh, you can explore um, capital markets. If you think you you have the risk appetite to to cope, to cope with the volatility, so you can do that. Basically, there are a couple of investments that, you can, and depending on the organization where you work and your risk appetite also. So uh, just just to digress a little. When and most importantly, also, and I find out that most companies don't don't have a policy document that guides their cash flow management. It is very very important. So um, you need to be able to have a policy document that guides your cash flow management. So you have a policy document that tells you exactly what the company is ready to take in terms of how to manage idle cash. So it tells you these are the kind of investment the company can take either idle cash. These are the risk level or the risk appetite of the company in terms of investment. So when you have those, those documents, those three documents, uh, policy document, it helps the accountant, it helps the finance department. So even if you are the CFO, you are the head of finance. If you walk away from that organization, the next man is not left hanging. He has a document to review. The company has agreed on some certain things that, that can be done with their high to fund. So that is very important. It's also very important to have that policy document. So um, talking about the channels where you can put your 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 your, your high to cash, you can you can give your customers early payment discount. So these are some of the ways you so for instance, you, you have cash in your hands and your vendors are on maybe three months or 60 days. That's where that's where you agree with your vendors. You want to pay them maybe 60 days, 60. That's where you are supposed to pay your vendors. Or you find out that you have cash in your hands. So you do, you wait. So if I put cash, this cash in, maybe if I push this cash in bond or I put it in cash bills, what am I going to hand? What rate of return am I going to have? So you consider and you now look at it. Okay, if I ask my vendors that I'm supposed to pay in 60 days, and I say, look, I'm going to pay you now, but you can give, you give me a discount. So maybe your vendor agrees to give you 10% or 15%. Consider that against what you're going to get if you put that, that uh, cash in the short term investment. If the discount you're going to get from paying your vendors early is higher, you can, you can do that early payment to your vendor. You can use your cash for that. In that way, you are using your cash effectively as well. If you can consider even investing outside the, after the shore of the country. If your business has that, um, has that um, what is it called, appetite, basically, has that risk appetite, especially if your business hand in foreign currency, and you don't have to, so you don't, you don't have to deal with the volatility of the FX. You can you can decide to take your investment out of the country and invest in some of the short-term investment opportunities that are there. So, but essentially, when we are looking at con country, basically, you can do commercial papers, you can do bonds, you can do treasury bills, you can do capital markets if you think you can. You want to deal with you can deal with volatility that is the capital market and if you have uh, the fund to if you have fund to play around and depending on how long you have that fund so you can look at all that other uh, uh, mid-term investment as well not be basically very short investment on you know, short-term investment you can look at some other mid-term investment channel as well that you can put in, into but most importantly you need to put your ears to the ground that's the most important thing when making this kind of investment. You need to put your ears to the ground. You need to know, monitor the market on a regular basis. You need to know what rates these investments are paying. You need to know which one is paying better. And because you need to constantly find a way to outperform inflation. 
you need to constantly find a way to have accommodation. So those are there are some of uh, there are some of other uh, short term investment vehicles that you can put your idle fund in. But these are some of the ones you can consider. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, once again, um, while we're still here, ladies and gentlemen, if you're just joining us, we have our uh, experts in the house, Mr. Adeni, Adeni uh, an account, professional accountant with over 20 years of professional accounting experience who's worked across many industries. And we can clearly see that um, you don't purchase experience from the market. What we are getting in the house tonight is really loaded. So if you're an accountant in the house tonight, we've heard just um, in the last few minutes, you know, one of the first things you need to do is to ensure that your organization has a policy document in terms of handing excess cash. And then um, I can also hear from what he said, an accountant needs to also be an investment manager. Your peers have to be on the ground all the time. You have to monitor the investment world. You have to know what is happening, the rate of inflation, the rate of the treasury bills, commercial papers, which companies have issued their bonds, you know, and how long. And with all this information, you can then better advise business owners or of course you, you you take those decisions for yourself in your in your personal um financial management miss adeni for businesses where does loan borrowing where does it come into play in terms of handling idle cash what can businesses do with loans you know some businesses tell you they're back in to borrow you know, some businesses feel very good with borrowing. But from your advice, what would you say for the accountant in advising the business owner as regards loan, investment, and the handle cash management, idle cash management, sorry? Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> I'll be surprised if any accountant would say it's not good to borrow. I mean, he, 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 borrowing, borrowing is not bad. And like I, I said it most of the time when I speak, I, I run a regular um, in the financial and economic analysis uh, program on the radio Rock City. And I most times when I when I speak and I, I tell them uh, it's it's uh, borrowing is not bad. Uh, it's not it's not bad to borrow. I mean, oh, majorly all, all countries of the world borrow, majorly all companies of the, of the world borrow. But why do you use those borrowed funds? That's the major, that's the major thing. And basically when you're borrowing, there are some certain things that you need to look at. You need to look at the respective loan covenants. You need to look at um, the ability to pay back. You need to look at the, 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 the loan document, what are the security, what are the collateralizations that they are looking for. You basically, you, a whole lot of things. You need to have worked out your cash flow and know that you're not going to find yourself in trouble with that, right? But it's not good to, it's not bad to borrow. If you have the cash sitting down, doing nothing, and you have a turnkey project or you have a capital project, well, you can commit your cash to that rather than going to borrow at an expensive cost. But if you don't have the cash, you, you you go borrowing to do to do to do to do to do your business and to undertake capital projects. So basically, most most giants, most in, companies in the world, most industrial giants have grown through borrowing. There's a discipline that even comes with borrowing. I mean, there's a financial discipline that comes with borrowing. It keeps you on the, on your toes. So top borrowing is is not is not is not bad. So if anybody has the notion that it's not good to borrow, please you need to change that. What is very important about borrowing is um, before you borrow, you need to have done your analysis. You need to have done the, your 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 own work to know why are you borrowing, uh, what you are borrowing for. I and mean, that's you want to do that project you want to do. You need to be able to pay it set back. I mean, a lot of analysis is being done. I, 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 a payback period. I mean, MPV. You do all your all your calculations and all of that, and you know that yes, this project, all things being equal, this project, all things being equal, you'll be able to pay it step, step, step back. 
and you've even given to have um, a mileage from, from, from borrowing. So borrowing is not is not bad at all. So but in when you're speaking in terms of ID cash as well. So if you have ID cash, you have a capital project at heart. Rather than going to borrow, unless you have so these are some of the things that accountants seems to do. So you need to weigh it as well. So if I have a, if I have ID cash in my hand, I have an hundred million, for instance, and I have a project that I want to do, the hundred million as well. And I look at what are the avenues that I have to invest my hundred million. If I invest my hundred million in a particular avenue, I could maybe get maybe maybe if I can get twenty percent rate of returns. And I look at the project that I want to do. If I want to borrow for that, project, maybe I could borrow at the rate of fifteen percent or eighteen percent, so to speak. So it, it makes it makes sense for me to go and borrow, not to use my idle fund to do that. I could use my ID phone and put it in an investment wherever I can earn 20%, 23% or whatever. If I have that, if I have that in my hands, then I would I just go borrow and pay 15%. I do it for my personal finance. I do that and I, I, I can do it on a corporate level as well. I've done it a couple of times for my personal finance. I, I have funds that I can use. I, I can use for a project, and I find out that I could hand a higher return of that fund. I went borrowing because the rate of borrowing is cheaper from what I would get from, from investing my idle fund. So it's just thinking out of the box as a finance person all the time, thinking out of the box, trying to compare alternative. You need to juggle things together, compare alternative, and see what's giving you the best result. So it's not one jacket fit or it's not one approach that, that will give you the solution, but you need to begin consistently compare alternatives that you have and alternatives that are open to you at every time when you want to take those decisions, to be able to take a decision. So that, that's what I would say when, I, when it has to do with uh, borrowing. Thank you. That, that's personal finance smart. Um, I, I hope we're taking notes. Yes, yeah, so we want to take some questions. Um, at this time, it's time to send in your questions. Drop your questions on the chat box. We will be there to pick them up. Uh, we already have a question. Uh, the question says, some business owners request for sorry, the bank sorry. balance. Okay, sorry, sorry. moderator, Please just give me a minute. Answer. Just give me a minute, I'll be back with you shortly. Just give me a minute. All right. Okay, yeah, so please put your questions together. We, we will continue to gather them as we respect uh, back our, our experts in the house. I have gathered a lot tonight. I don't know if we're taking notes, but I Yes, am. yes. Uh, th thank you, Chris. It's been, a, it's been an interesting session, actually. And um, and I um, I know Mr. Nui, the experienced professional, so I'm not surprised that the tips is giving dishing out this night. It's been interesting, actually. Uh, where, I, where I am now, somebody was asking me, is there idle cash anywhere? That's the question. That is looking for, is into real estate. He wants to invest into property. He has a land in Guzapi, Abuja. He wants to develop for people to buy. And he needs a lot of cash. So where is the idle cash? Because he was with me in this meeting, actually, just there's, sitting near me. So like, there's, there's a lot of cash. Yeah, actually, I, I told him that actually the companies have a lot of cash. You know, so he's just wondering where is this cash and how can he access this cash either by way of loans. You know, so is it possible that um, companies that are not into financial services um, can make cash available into other investments? For example, I'm into real estate and I need like 100 million to develop property in a particular location that I am very sure will sell. Can I approach a company, to, you know, to invest into that as part of investing the idle cash so that you know, when we sell off, they make money. So just just asking if this cash is available with companies or not with banks, how can other companies assess the idle cash of other companies? That's just a kind of random question that came out of this discussion. Thank you, and over. Mm. Amazing. Uh, so I, okay, I think I'm, I like I'm that question. Actually back. Oh, welcome, sir. Welcome back. Um, okay, thank you. Yeah. You know, to answer Umar's question quickly before we go back to our experts, I'm just a moderator here. You know, there's a lot of idle cash in this, especially in Nigeria. MMM will come, 
twin cars will come, different schemes will come. You think there's no money in the country? That's your neighbor that you think didn't have money. When they start to tell you how many millions they lost to platforms like MMM and the rest, then you begin to understand that there's a lot of money. It's just about how much you can put yourself together to access those funds from people. All right, welcome back, Mr. Deni. I don't know if you heard uh, Mr. Umar's question. Uh, well, let me, let, me quickly, want to... let me quickly react to that. Uh, Please go Umar. ahead. Um, so I, I tell people all the time, um, I, I, I had the training for, for ICANN, um, what's the continuous, continuous uh, mandatory training for ICANN on this same topic, uh, sometimes, um, I think last year in Port Harcourt. And I was able to show a lot of people that I had to cash line around. It is just the ability to assess this cash. And you need to know, and I can tell you today, they have cash available, money lying everywhere. It is just the ability to assess this, 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 this fund. So um, in response to Umar's question, uh, some of these, some of the places where the funds are, I won't be able to disclose that on this call. If uh, this particular person needs help, Umar, you can reach out to me personally. I can, I can, I can direct. But you see, when you see uh, firms like venture capital firms and private equity firms, basically most of the essential thing they do is they look at where they have cash surplus and try to match that with where there is cash deficit. So they look for institutional investors, individuals that are high net worth individuals, but they have cash and they are looking for where to invest. And these guys just look for where there is a cash deficit and just bring them together. And consummate that transaction and they hand a fee for doing that. That's basically what they do. And within the country and outside the country, there are cash ability. Personally, I've raised over a hundred million dollars for entities. But most importantly, you must have a bankable project. That's the number one thing. If I'm going, if I'm going to look, if you are going to raise cash, you just have to have a bank. That is one. Two is whoever is looking for cash, please you need to ensure that you have call your constitutional documents intact, ready. And what do I mean by constitutional document? You have your company where registered. You have your CAC. You have your tax. You are task clearance, you are basically all the constitutional documents or statutory documents, if you want to call it that. You need to do that. And you have, need to have a structure. The company needs to have a structure. If you don't have a structure, it's a no no for most investors. Most right. investors will look at your company and just walk away. So these are some of the things that make entities in Nigeria find it difficult to attract capital. But I need to assure you on this call. There's money. Everywhere there's money. Thank you very much. Um, that is by way of some diversion. It seems like we have a topic for another day. Just from this line of thought, we will come to that in future programs. Uh, but to take questions as regards tonight, we have a question here. Some business owners request for their bank balances daily. They are happy when the balance is high. Does a high account balance suggest poor cash flow management? Mr. Adeni. Okay, not in all cases. Not in all cases, and I'll tell you why. So I give you a, a typical example of an entity where I've worked. So they have a loan repayment that is structured 
on a quarterly basis. So the, the loan is serviced on a quarterly basis. And because the loan is serviced on a quarterly basis, the revenue that will be hand in a particular month will be insufficient to take care of that loan. So you find out from three months ahead, they start building up cash in order to be able to service that loan. So when you look at such entities bank statement, you see each amount of cash month on month. Well, it doesn't mean it's poor cash flow management. It doesn't mean the cash flow is not well planned. So basically, that's why I said not in all cases. But in some, in some cases, when you have huge cash balances that is not specifically tied to anything, it means you are not managing the cash flow of the organization. So you could have a project ahead of you and you are trying to build cash towards meeting that project. So if you see your bank balance with very high cash balances at the end of the month, it doesn't mean you are not managing the cash very well. And that's why a projection is always very important because a projection allows you to see clearly ahead, maybe 12 months ahead, what is going to happen. You could see the months where you, okay, where you have a project, basically, if you, let's say we are, in, we are in August now, excuse me, and you have a project maybe next year, December. I mean, a project that is going to take maybe with one billion. By the time you throw in the cost of that project into December, it's going to throw December into 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 negative. But you, from your cash flow projection, you see that you need to be able to accrue cash on a monthly basis towards meeting that project which you have in December. So by the time you you have your bank balance or you take care of bank statement every month and you see huge balances there, you know exactly what those huge balances are. But those huge balances that are there. It's not supposed to just be sitting down in work, in your bank accounts, in your current accounts, and you just be looking at it. You could invest it in some short-term investment channel or vehicle that can give you returns towards when you need it. Even, for instance, the entity where I work, that they have to service a loan every quarter. The money that they keep on a monthly basis I make sure that that money is even invested by the bank. The bank that is going to take that loan, put that money on short-term investment till the third month when that loan will be paid. In that way, you are not losing any money. You could even ask the bank to put the money on call. That is seven days call, that is 10 days call, no matter how. The, 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 the rate of call, call deposit is very low. But well, you don't know the amount of money you make if the sum is very huge. Just imagine you have one billion naira and you ask the bank to just put it on seven days call. You have one billion naira, you want to pay somebody that next week, Friday. But the money is in your account right now. I'll just tell the bank, put it on seven days call. Wow. But well, before that seven days, before you are paying next week, you already made a, a huge amount of money from it. You pay the people their one billion. You have the interest that you get on your call in your in your bank account or to meet other organizational expenses. Mr. Denny, Mr. Denny Adey, thank you very much for being very resourceful on the platform tonight. The house does appreciate you. You have added value to our lives and we're living blessed, much better than we came in. God bless you. Yo, Bolale, please. Thank you so much once again for joining us on today's edition of the Account Solution webinar. We continue again next week, same time, 8 p.m. Uh, please invite your friends and anyone you think will be interested in these topics. My name is Bolale Iyo, and Till next week, it's good night and God bless.